hello, good morning, and welcome to the Celebration Space. My name is Kaylee Phelps and I am very excited to be here. I took last week off just because I wasn't feeling super great. So just a quick reminder to please take care of your body and I'll post a really great graphic uh, that I've been using to track my symptoms that talks about the differences in the symptoms between a cold, flu, and COVID-19. So I'll make sure I post that today. And yes, thank you for everyone who's checked in on me. I'm really excited to be back. So today I wanted to talk about something that has been a game changer for me lately with, we're in a very odd time. I'm not gonna say unprecedented because all of us have heard that word more than we ever needed to. And I, I think between the political climate, between the climate with a global health crisis and all of that, I've been feeling really overwhelmed. And if you know me or um, maybe you're the same way, if I see notifications on my phone, I want to check them. That is an instant cue to my brain. Hey, you have something on your to-do list. This is something that you need to check in on. I also have something called FOMO. So the fear of missing out. So F-O-M-O. -O. So I have FOMO, pretty hardcore. I've always had it. I was a very difficult child to put to bed because I was always scared that like, oh, like, if the adults are staying up, like I don't wanna miss out on anything, or I was never the first person to fall asleep at a sleepover, any of that stuff. So I am someone that has a fear of missing out. And if I know that something is going on on an app or there is an instant notification, that is a cue to my brain that gives me a little bit of anxiety. And so as we know, as things are changing and progressing in the world around us very rapidly, there are a lot of notifications going on on my phone. So I, for a while, I was trying to do no notifications whatsoever. So everything was very intentional. I'll often say that an organize, organized life is an intentional life. So taking into practice things that I really want to do and be intentional, like if I'm going to look at my text messages, it's because I wanna look at my text messages. If I wanna look at my Facebook, it's because I want to look at my Facebook, not because there's a little red dot or a number next to it telling me that I have things going on there. So that is something that I tried and it gave me more anxiety because I was always constantly going through the rounds of checking my all of my apps. And I wrote down some statistics so bear with me as I have my notes right here and I'm getting back into the swing of things, but I have 43 apps on my phone and I have all of my apps organized on the front screen. I wish I could show you, but I'm filming this on my phone. So that shows the dependence on our phones, but I have 43 apps and that includes all of my native apps. So the native apps are like your settings, your your phone app, which is what the phone is supposed to be, your messages app, uh, weather, all of those types of things, calculator. So that includes all of my native apps in there. And I have all of them organized into seven folders. And I have four apps that are independent outside. So I have my settings app in the, up in the upper left-hand corner. And then down at the bottom, I have messages, Safari, and my phone app. But the seven folders that I have are function, finance, Google, travel, social, entertainment, and wellness. So I have all that organized on the one page on my phone and I did some research and so I have 43 apps. The majority of people have between 60 and 90 apps, but they only use 30 of them each month. So that is a lot of storage that you're using, a lot of kind of that headspace clutter, or that technological clutter that I've been talking about. And uh, the average American checks their phone every 12 minutes, but 10% of Americans check their phone every four minutes. So that is those, those notifications. If you have your phone nearby a lot of the day and you're seeing things popping up, you might be like me and you might have some of that FOMO, you might have some anxiety, you might, it might register in your brain as a to-do list item. So that's something that I try to keep my phone as far away from me as possible. I do have my messages come 
to my laptop, so that's really helpful, and my phone calls, so that helps me so I can leave my phone away while I'm working on my laptop. But like I said, I turned off all of my notifications across my phone, and it actually gave me more anxiety because I was going through all 43 of those apps just to check in once per day because um, I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't getting those natural notifications. So, and that was a huge waste of time and I ended up doing it more than once per day. So I really brought it down to what I now call my slippery seven, my seven apps that I will always keep without notifications on them and that is because they are a slippery slope. Once I have one notification, I open the app, I can go down a rabbit hole. So I have vowed that I'm not going to have these apps open. I've been doing it the last two weeks and I think last week I do get all of my I tried to get notifications each week about my screen time, which I highly recommend if you have an iPhone, and I know that there's one on Android as well, but really just knowing what my screen time is week to week, and my screen time went down 24%. Granted, I was sick as well, but also I was on my phone in bed and sleeping and just kind of trying to stay in touch with the world. So. That is what I um, have been doing. So those seven apps that I have vowed I will never have notifications on are, the biggest one is Gmail. So my email, I have a love-hate addiction to the drama of email. I had a phone call with a friend yesterday where we talked about how we feel like the United States and Americans can be a little bit addicted to the drama. You can even see it in reality TV. And a lot of that as well can be in our email and being addicted to notifications, being addicted to being busy and being addicted to having some stress in our lives. So my email, I check religiously, but I really need to take a break from it because once I have an email come up, if I'm working on a project or doing any of this, I actually did this for the first time when I was working in an office environment and I went on PTO one day and I was like, hey, while I'm on PTO, I need to make sure paid time off. I should clarify just in case. But while I was on vacation, I wanted to make sure that I didn't have notifications for my email on my phone coming to me every two seconds. And when I got back to the office, I actually just decided, hey, most of the time that I'm on my email, I'm on my computer, why do I have notifications going both places and getting blown up in both spaces while I'm at work and then while I'm at home, if someone sent me an email at like 8 p.m. and I happened to check my phone because I wanted to make sure I didn't miss a call or something, then I would go down the rabbit hole of my email. So my email is off limits. I only check my email when I want to check my email, which is by intentionally clicking into that app and going there or getting on my computer. Then all of the other six are actually social media platforms. So Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And really, I didn't need to do it for all six of them. I don't really get a ton. I'm not super active on Twitter or Pinterest but I have all of them in that social folder and I really just kind of wanted a clean cut from that folder. I do have Snapchat as well, but I do have notifications there because I'm not super popular on Snapchat and the things that I get on Snapchat are normally more fun and far and few between. So I don't really go down the rabbit hole there as much as I would if I get a notification on Pinterest that's like, hey, these are the trending topics of the day, like why don't you check these out? And then I end up scrolling and checking out a bunch of pins. So that is the same with LinkedIn as well. I am currently trying to audit and monitor my news, uh, how I consume news and consume the media. So I do follow LinkedIn gives you news notifications, but I'm also getting news notifications in my email as well. So I've been trying to monitor both of those really closely. So a couple of other statistics are that 90% of your mobile time is on apps. So, and 21% of millennials open an app at least 50 times per day. So that's, that's really why I decided to cut back on my notifications and not cut off notifications across the board. But what I try to do is just check the notifications on those slippery seven apps 
once per day so that I know that I'm in touch with things. And then also I feel like it's pretty free range on my computer. I tried to practice things like two tab Tuesday or having a one window for kind of clutter, like my email and a bunch of articles I wanna read and then one window uh, so I can minimize that and then one window open for projects that I'm working on, like writing blog posts and editing videos so that that can be more focused and I have to be intentional when I go to that more clutter window of the internet when I open that up. So those are my slippery seven. That's why I have disabled my notifications. I highly recommend doing a little audit of all of the apps that you have. Maybe you're in that 60 to 90 range, but you're only using 30% of them. Checking out your screen time and how much you're using all of those apps and seeing how it might be a weight off your shoulders, especially during the global health crisis and as we're getting closer to the election, how it might be able to help you and your mental health by monitoring your non notifications and peeling those back and determining what seven was a good number for me. I have 43 apps, seven was a good number. But depending on your phone and what you use, just checking out what might work for you. And if you have any feedback, if you have anything that works for you, please message me. I'd love to hear from you and even just talk about what apps might be, you know, slippery slopes for you. And feel free to comment below. And until next time, enjoy celebrating today.